Welcome to the weekly show with Dear Wine, another episode of how economic buzzwords are born. Let's roll back the clock to the era of the U.S.-China trade war, when Trump was like, "I'll sanction China, and it's gonna be like a boxing match where the opponent doesn't even show up." <laughs> But lo and behold, several rounds later, the U.S. started realizing that they're tangled up with China in so many sectors that sanctions were like cutting off their own arms. <laughs> Then they moved on to decoupling, which sounded like. They were trying to perform an intricate, delicate surgical procedure with a sledgehammer, <laughs> but what was really happening was more like trying to saw a boat in half while you're still in the water. Don't worry, folks. We might be sinking, but at least we're not connected to China anymore. <laughs> Obviously, decoupling wasn't well received, especially by European nations who didn't want to be a part of this game. After all, in the capitalist world of free markets, erecting barriers and establishing a separate system sounded like showing up to a potluck party with no dish to share.、Uh-oh. Who would follow such an anti-globalization move? So they smoothly transitioned to the risky. Now it sounds like a normal business practice and could get Europeans behind. Yeah, who doesn't like reducing risks? Turns out, it's easier to sell a car if you market it as zero risk, right, rather than solo drive. <laughs> But wait, isn't it kind of a sneaky way to imply that China is the risk? It's like telling your significant other, "Honey, I don't want to break up. I just want you to stop being you."、Mm-hmm. Wait, what do you mean stop being me? Well, I've just slapped a risky label on you, so now everyone, myself included, might think twice before hanging out with you. <laughs> What a blame game coated in sugar! It creates an illusion of fear when, in reality, the risk they're trying to dodge is part and parcel of the international trade itself. Yes, trade, by its very nature, is a risk. So to say, let's do business but without any risk is kind of like saying, let's go swimming but without getting wet. <laughs> In the end, if we zoom out, it's like a game of linguistic chess. First, the U.S. played sanctions, a king's move that backfired. Then came decoupling, a queen's move that found no supporters on the board. <laughs> Now they've repackaged the same move as. To risking, <laughs> expecting a different outcome, it's like switching from Coke to Pepsi and hoping to fool others into believing that it's gonna make a difference to their waistline. <laughs> and sure, the narrative seems to have shifted from offense to neutrality to defense, but the underlying motive remains the same: maintaining dominance. And sometimes that involves some misleading, some deception, and a whole lot of wordplay. That's our show for tonight, folks. In this global game, changing the lingo doesn't change the truth. The biggest risk is not to cooperate, especially when we're all connected. Globalization isn't about dividing the risks; it's about multiplying the opportunities for all of us. Have a good night. <laughs>